In this video, we have a low profile numpad showdown. If you're looking for a low profile mechanical keyboard and you need to have that numpad, then you're either looking at a 100% or a 96%. And in this video, we're gonna compare the Nufi Air 96 to the Keychron K5 line. As of the time of recording this video, Keychron does not currently offer a 96% low profile keyboard. Oh wait, did they just launch one? I'm just kidding, but seriously, Keychron seems to be releasing a new keyboard just about every 10 minutes at this point. So I'm kind of surprised they don't yet have a 96% in a low profile format. It's also a little bit confusing right now if you go over to Keychron's website and look at their K5 line. They have the original K5, the K5 SE, which is what I have here. And then they just recently released the K5 Pro recently, which takes the K5 design and it adds QMK via compatibility for key remapping. And honestly, I have to say right out of the gate, if you think that the K5 uh, layout or format, if you wanna stick with 100% and you're interested in that, I honestly just think the K5 Pro is the best choice right now if you're gonna buy one of them. And it's only, I think, five or $10 more expensive than what the K5 SE or K5 original were. All right, so the main question, if you're looking at the Nufi Air 96 or the K5 line from Keychron, that main question you're gonna have to ask yourself is, will you be comfortable with the key layout of the Air 96 compared to a true 100% layout where you have all of that spacing between your main key area and your numpad? Because the Air 96 uses a compact 96% layout, there is no spacing at all between the main key area the arrow keys and the numpad. But of course there are some other uh, specification differences between these. So let's dig in and talk about that as well as kind of the pros and cons of each. All right, let's start with the K5 here. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is the K5 SE model, which means that it has an aluminum uh, top frame, but it has an ABS plastic bottom case. And it also means that it has adjustable feet. So the original K5 was all aluminum and did not have adjustable feet, but the K5 SE has the ABS plastic bottom and it does have adjustable feet. So as far as differences from the original K5, uh, to the K5 SE, those are your main differences. It's really that the plastic bottom, but you're gaining the adjustable feet. I do wanna also mention that the original keycaps that came on my K5 SE, as well as what comes on the regular K5, they are uh, Keychron's ABS plastic shine through keycaps. And I actually left the escape key, the original one on here because I liked the orange color of it, but I'm actually not a huge fan of those keycaps. So I actually bought a separate set of their PBT low profile keycaps. But if you do go for the K5 Pro, that comes with their PBT low profile keycaps on it. So you don't have to worry about the ABS if you're not a fan of those. And the K5 Pro also comes with Gatoron low profile 2.0 switches included, which are the same switches that are available in the Nufi Air 96. Of course, Nufi also has their own Gatoron collaboration switches. You have the Wisteria, the Daisy, and the Aloe. The Daisy and the Aloe are both uh, linear switches and the Wisteria are tactile switches, but you can also get Gatoron low profile 2.0 switches. My K5 SE here has Gatoron low profile 1.0 brown switches in it. And I'll give you typing sound samples at the end of the video here. Now, as I mentioned, the main pro in favor of the K5 100% uh, layout is that you have this wonderful amount of space with the arrow keys and the separation of your numpad. So if you absolutely need that separation because you just spend all day every day using your numpad, and your arrow keys more than anything else, then maybe the 100% layout is something you need to stick with. With the 96% layout, you're always gonna have a couple of trade-offs. First of all, you're always gonna have the trade-off with a 96% of a single size zero key. So if we just look at these two top to bottom, you're always gonna have this trade-off here. 100% keyboard has a double size zero key on the numpad, making it super easy to always have that be striking that regardless of sort of what your hand angle or positioning is, you know you're hitting the zero key. Whereas with a 96% keyboard, low profile, high profile, doesn't matter. You're always gonna get a single size 
zero key here, which means in order to hit that zero key, you have to be, you know, right on the zero. You can't be in the general neighborhood of the zero. Otherwise, you're going to hit the right arrow key by accident. And if you're working in spreadsheets, you know that accidentally arrowing over to a different cell without realizing it can cause a big fat mess. Now, one thing I can say is that I personally haven't had too much of an issue in my use with the Air 96 on as far as the numpad goes. For some reason, I just haven't found it super difficult to adjust to uh, this more cramped style on the Air 96 as far as the numpad goes and the accuracy there. However, I do make errors when it comes to the arrow keys and I use a high profile Halo 96 as my daily driver, but I still kind of make errors but when I'm trying to hit, especially the up arrow key, I'll hit the enter key or vice versa, or sometimes the shift key or sometimes the one. For some reason, not having the space around the arrows has been the thing that's thrown me off more than the more cramped numpad. So that's just something to keep in mind. Personally, I think it's just a muscle memory thing. I used 100% keyboards for years. Uh, I personally haven't found it to be a deal breaker to have the more cramped layout with the Air 96. And personally, I do enjoy the smaller footprint of the Air 96. And that smaller footprint is one of the pros of the Air 96. So especially if you're using like a keyboard tray under your desk, if you don't keep your keyboard on top of the desk, you know, that can be a pretty cramped little space, especially if your mouse is down there as well. And so if you've got the Air 96 or any 96% compared to a 100%, you're gaining that space on, well, on either side of the keyboard, depending on which hand you use for your mouse. And that just means you have more play. You have more room to navigate with your mouse compared to the 100%, which, you know, it's gonna take up like nearly all of the real estate of your keyboard tray, unless it's like the width of your desk. So space saving is definitely one of the pros of the Air 96. As I mentioned earlier, it comes with Gatoron Low Profile 2.0 switches or one of the Newfie collaboration switches. And the keycaps are double shot PBT. Another pro in favor of the Air 96 is that the battery capacity is double that of the Keychron K5 line. So the Keychron K5, including the newest Pro model, has a 2000 milliamp hour battery, whereas the Air 96 has a 4000 milliamp hour battery. As far as Bluetooth use time estimates with all the backlighting off, Keychron estimates up to 100 hours, whereas the Air 96 estimates up to 300 hours. However, if you are using the backlighting, if you have your RGBs on, uh, the Air 96 estimates that it drops to 25 to 55 hours. I think that range is to account for, you know, the level of brightness that you have it set to. And Keychron estimates that the use time drops to 33 hours with the backlighting on the lowest setting. So it would be even lower than that if you have your backlighting on the highest setting. So no matter how you look at it, you're gonna get better battery life out of the Air 96. But of course, if you use these in wired mode using the USB-C connection, then you don't have to worry about any of that. Now, the original K5 and the K5 SE here don't have any functionality for uh, key remapping or customization. So that would be a con in this case compared to the Air 96. However, if you're looking at the K5 Pro, uh, that is QMK via compatible. So you can use that open source software to go ahead and remap, add macros, have multiple layers. And so that would be a pro in favor of the K5 Pro. Pro because Newfie's Air 96 does have key remapping and customization. However, it only works with the Newfie console software. It's not QMK via compatible. And right now that software is only available on Windows. So if you're a Mac user and you don't have access to a Windows computer, you just don't have Newfie console at all. And so you can't actually do any of that nice remapping. Now there are third party solutions for remapping keys on a uh, Mac computer like Carabiner Elements. So it's not a total loss there for the Air 96, but it would be nice if Newfie would update their console software to be available on Mac. As far as connectivity, they both connect to up to three devices over Bluetooth. The Keychron K5 Pro is going to be Bluetooth 5.1. The Newfie Air 96 is Bluetooth 5.0. However, the Air 96 also has another trick up its sleeve because you can connect it to a fourth device using a 2.4 gigahertz wireless receiver that does come in the box. So it is nice to have that extra option because sometimes the 2.4 gigahertz connection can be a little bit more uh, reliable than Bluetooth depending on the positioning of you know where your computer is uh, relative to your keyboard. Now, when it comes to the RGB lighting on these keyboards, honestly, the K5 line is nothing to write home about. It's pretty average uh, RGB backlighting. They do have options to get uh, just white backlights as well as RGB. And the Pro model, as I mentioned, comes with PBT keycaps, so they are not shine through. 
The Nufi Air 96 RGB experience just feels like a little bit of a step up from your standard RGBs in addition to your individual key RGBs. You've also got the side indicator RGBs, which can be turned on or off separately. They also help to indicate Bluetooth connectivity, the 2.4 gigahertz connectivity, uh, and the status of caps lock. Whereas the K5 line has individual LED indicators for NumLock caps, as well as which operating system layout it's currently set to, Mac or Windows, and on the left side, it's got LED indicators for the battery status as well as the Bluetooth connection. Now, both of these keyboards also feature switches, of course, to switch between the connection type as well as the Windows or Mac key layouts. All right, just a couple more pros and cons here, and then we will get to that typing sound test. Typing feel, hands down, I'm giving it to the Air 96. There's just something more firm and stable about the typing experience. It just feels higher quality on the Air 96 compared to my K5 SE. I don't know if Keychron has improved that, at all with the K5 Pro, uh, but if it's possible for a low profile keyboard with very, very small amount of travel to still somehow feel wobbly, I feel a little bit of unstable wobbly feeling with the K5 SE. Nothing like severe, nothing terrible. And I may not have even complained about it if I had never used the Air 96. It's, it's somehow both firm and easy to type on at the same time. I also feel like the sound is more satisfying with the Air 96. It is a little bit louder. It's more subtle with the K5 SE, which can be a good thing if you're going for a subtle sound. However, I find it to sound a little bit thin also, which I know, haha, it's a low profile keyboard. That could also be because there's some plastic and also because you know the, key, uh, the keys are floating. Uh, and there's really nothing around it to encase the sound at all. But overall, I just find the typing experience to be uh, significantly better on the Air 96. Of course, a good chunk of my feeling about that is subjective. So if you disagree, let me know in the comments. Pricing on these, the Air 96 is $119.95. If you're getting the K5 Pro, the newest K5, that is also $119. So they are the same price. If you are interested in the K5 SE or the original K5, most of the options and model combinations seem to be out of stock on Keychron's website. But if you happen to want one with black PBT keycaps already installed and a white only backlight, you can actually get one of those right now for I think $84 on Keychron's website. And the original K5, which has the all aluminum construction, also has a couple models still available, but I don't think the RGB hot swappable option is currently in stock either. I do think it's at a discounted price. So because those are discounted and the K5 Pro is not, and the availability of the K5 and the K5 SE is very mixed, I'm honestly not sure whether Keychron plans to continue making them. But regardless, if you were thinking of going with the Keychron option, I do think the K5 Pro is gonna be your best choice because it gives you the most features and it is the same price as the Air 96. All right, so that'll do it for my comparison of the K5 line to the Air 96. Personally, I'm very happy with the Air 96 and I just don't take the K5 SE out of the box anymore. And not just because it's 100% layout and I like saving the space, but because I think the typing feel and the RGBs and everything is just better with the Air 96 as far as overall what you're getting for the price. But as I mentioned, if you disagree, if you think that the K5 Pro is a better option, if you have one and you like the typing feel, let me know in the comments. Let me know the things you like or dislike about these two keyboards down in the comments. And I will leave you now with a sound test of both of these keyboards. 